Are you on YouTube? Do you have a YouTube channel or page? I mean, do you go to you put YouTube often? Do you so go I, go to my yeah, see if see if the audio sounds good. Always asking people as I begin to check the audio. Audio okay. If the audio is good, we're good to go. If not. Well, Mad Dog Sports Radio. Next Monday we'll be live from next week we'll be live. Okay, subscribe to it too there if you can. Oh, you did. Oh, good. Thank you. Can you hear the audio? Can you hear the audio? Good. That's all I needed. Hmm. Yeah, let me try to get the Zoom going. Mm -hmm. You got the WNBA draft tonight, which I actually think is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Judge Home Run's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, my friend. If you have, you should be able to find it pretty quickly. I would hope you have a Caitlin Clark 3 or anything with her if I get to her in the open. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm looking at the dock on the Zoom. Okay, let me know if we get the uh, let me know if we get the calls up in that too. How are you going to do that? As always, let me. Well, I got my YouTube friends joining us. Hopefully, a couple of them say hello. All right. How do we sound in the chat? Shut this door here. What do you think of the brick backdrop? All right. All good. Out of the gate, JT with you. Beautiful on a Monday night. Off yesterday as I was traveling back from San Diego. A little bit gloomy and rainy San Diego for Billy Joel and Sting. Great concert. Other than the hour it rained on me nonstop like I was at a football game in the 80s. But 
Good time to get away. We're here on Mondays. Next Monday, we're coming to you live from the new Sirius XM studios in Vegas at the Wynn Resort and Casino, one of the best properties in the world. Excited about that, and I'm really excited to talk to you tonight on what I believe is a very important night in sports. We have history tonight as we're going to be live on the air, and I embrace history. I love being on the radio when there's history, and tonight is the WNBA draft. And tonight will give us the highest rating in the history of the WNBA draft after Caitlin Clark, in her final three games as a college basketball player, delivered 12 million, 14 million, and 18 million people to the WNBA, which is enormous. They never, ever, ever dream. They won't do a number like that in the WNBA. She got better ratings than LeBron James. LeBron James in the NBA, much better ratings in baseball, much better ratings in the USFL and the XFL that merged for the UFL, all of that stuff. A young girl from Iowa got us the biggest TV ratings that you can imagine. So that's history. I like being on during history, just like Scotty Scheffler yesterday winning his second of three. The last three Masters, he's won two of them. The Chiefs have won back-to-back Super Bowls. They're going for a three-peat. I don't love that. But I love being on the radio during history, and we got history tonight in the WNBA with Caitlin Clark, who looks like she's going to go, obviously, to Indiana. She'll play close to home from Iowa, and it'll be a good fit for the league. And now the reason I love this topic more than everything is this sport, the WNBA, okay, this sport, women's NBA, has one chance to become really good right now. This is it. They haven't been able to do this. They never got this rating. They never got anything. They've never got ratings. They didn't have people watching them. I think the largest WNBA finals was 786,000 fans, peaked at a million. But we're talking about her getting 18 million. So if you want to chime in on this topic, and that would be girl dads, that would be women who are listening to the show, uh, basketball fans in general. Remember, John Wooden liked women's basketball better than men's. He liked the fundamentals of it. My job is to uh, include you in as many topics as I can. My job is to come up with intriguing, informative, entertaining topics and go with it so you can react to it. You don't have to call the show. You can hit me up on Twitter, X, JT the Brick. You can come on our YouTube stream as I'm live on YouTube from home, JT the Brick, YT for YouTube. Please become a subscriber. We might have a prize for you. Looking to go over a surf number tonight. But this is a big storyline. I'm leading with it in the monologue because it's that important. Because if the WNBA doesn't take advantage of this moment, the WNBA is messing up. And everybody in that league should be called out if they screw this up. That's the topic. The topic is, Caitlin Clark, what's your legacy going to be? We've got plenty of time for that. The topic is simple. Can you screw up something so good with massive ratings and not take advantage of it? Gary Bettman did that with hockey. He really never got hockey going right. Kind of fixed it a little bit. You know, hockey's never taken TV by storm and have done great with with that sport overall. And look at the NFL. The NFL's putting games in Brazil. They're putting them in Germany, in London, not for ratings, for growth. This is about the growth of a league that's been around a long time. And I will say this. I respect women's sports. I got a mom. I got a wife. I got a mother-in-law. I have sisters. I respect women's sports. But this has been a highly critical sport your entire lifetime. Highly critical. There have been people calling my show and tweeting for a decade. The NBA's carrying this league. If it wasn't for the NBA, they'd be out of business. No one watches this, and the NBA has got to keep it afloat. Fair criticism over the years. A lot of it's been true. This is their moment. I'm a sports talk radio host. This is their moment. If they screw it up, they are messing everything up. So will they screw it up? I hope they don't screw it up. If you want to talk about how they can expand on this, I would go all Caitlin Clark. All due respect to the other ladies who do an unbelievable job, Angel Reese, all the other girls who are going to get drafted tonight. Here's what I would do. This is JT the Brick in three, two, and one. I take the entire league. I bring all the owners together. I bring all the coaches together and say, grow up. If you want this thing to work and you want to get money because you're never going to get paid like the men, you're never going to get paid like the men unless you get the ratings and the interest and the followers. So you better jump all over this and go all in on Caitlin Clark to be your star. Oh, well, what do you mean? Asia Wilson's the MVP. What do you mean? She's better. Deanna, Diana Taurasi's better. 
I don't care what you think, you're wrong. You stop everything and you go in with this young girl. Just like Otani with the Dodgers, LeBron and Steph in the NBA, you go all in with this young girl. You make her the star. You put her on every commercial and you hope some people get involved with the sport. That's the only way to do it. Don't give me anything else about, well, if they start regionally taking her games and put them on an app. No, 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 no. She already delivered massive ratings to the sport. 18 million. They didn't tune in to watch South Carolina. They tuned in to watch Caitlin Clark. Now what they have to do is find a way to maximize this. Love to get your opinion on that. You can get in the chat here on my YouTube, JT the Brick YT. You can get into the uh, tweets at Mad Dog Sports Radio. This is an important topic for me because I'm going to piggyback off it right now with what's triggering me and freaking me out with the NBA. So the NBA now has the play-in tournament. I think it's complete garbage. I've said that day one. It's absolute sports garbage. This is why at times you should thank the sports god, not the real god, the sports god that you got me on this channel a couple of nights a week. Because I'm going to tell you something that no one else is telling you. This is utter garbage. This is the softness of them of America. This is the dumbing down of America. This is America. It's not a problem around the world. It's an American problem. This is the juice box soccer mom, little league mom and dad who want to come on the field and make sure their kid gets an orange slice and they get an opportunity to be in the playoffs. So let's just do this everywhere. Let's. I'm, I'm in Vegas. Let's go to Little League in Vegas, to Little League where I'm from in Massapequa, Long Island. Let's go to Little League. Let's go to soccer because every kid plays soccer. Every bleeping kid plays soccer. None of them are going to play 0% of them. No, there's 0.0001% of American soccer players will play soccer in the biggest league in the world in the premiership, right? So less than 1% have a chance to play, but everybody wants to have their kid play soccer at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, maybe 10. And why? Because they want them all to feel fulfilled and get out and get some fresh air. It's a good thing. I mean, my kids didn't play soccer. They played Little League and basketball and, you know, youth football and all that. But for you soccer moms out there, this is now what the NBA has come to. It's a trap door. It's a safety net to tell everybody they're okay for being losers. You can lose all year. You don't have to play hard. You can load manage. You can take nights off when you're completely healthy. Steph Curry's done it. LeBron James has done it. They've all done it. Pretty much take nights off when you're completely healthy. And then when the playoffs start, if you don't make the playoffs, we'll make an exception and we'll let a nine and 10 seed in and we'll have a little tournament for them as a little safety net so they can go home and tell mommy and daddy they made the playoffs. Let's just do this now in America full time. Everybody who plays youth soccer in Little League should make the playoffs. You all, you all had that Little League team, didn't you? That that one bad Little League team when you were seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. It just it all happens almost to everybody. Well, you had that one year where you were two and fourteen. And oh my God, you, the other coaches had better players. Their son or daughter was better. They they just what we call it stacked back in the day. We all been a part of this. Everyone listening to me knows what I'm talking about. And you didn't make the playoffs. You didn't. You had a terrible year. You were two and fourteen. You know, you had a little party at the end of the year. Pizza, Carvel ice cream. Where I lived on Long Island, everybody had a party, even though the team stunk. But you didn't make the playoffs. No one made the playoffs. Well, you're two and 14. Now let's let everybody make the playoffs. So if your little league team or your youth soccer team comes in dead last, you still make the playoffs because that's what they're doing in the NBA. And that's what they're doing in major league baseball. We got three wild card teams. Let's just give everybody a chance to make the playoffs so they can go home and sleep easy. That's what this is to me. I think it is gutless. I think it is soft. And that's one of the things I talk about on radio at an alarming rate. I don't like the softness of American sports and the way we try to make everybody happy. And Adam Silver's trying to do that to his television partners. His television partners are pissed off because of load management. His television partners are upset because whenever you put on an NBA game and there's like five really big stars, three on one team, two on the other. So five players, max four of them are going to play. One star will be sitting out due to something. Uh, load management has dominated this league. And now they have a opening in-season tournament and a play-in tournament at the end. This year was so screwed up for the W uh, for the NBA. It was so screwed up that at the beginning of the year, the Lakers won the in-season tournament and actually had the gall to hang that pathetic banner. They hung that banner inside crypto that has the names of Jerry West, Will Chamberlain, two banners for Kobe Bryant with the number 24 and 8. 
How about Magic Johnson? You ever hear of him? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And they took that in-season tournament and they hung it up there. Now, I wouldn't have a problem with it as badly if the Lakers came in first place. If they came in first, you'd be like, wow, they came in first in the division. They're the one seed. They won the in-season tournament. They won the in-season tournament. Now, what are they, the eighth seed coming into this thing? It meant nothing. They just played for a little bit of money to jump in there and feel good about themselves. So now the NBA is off and running. I want your opinion on that topic. I got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, the great Jordan Schultz, really good emerging NFL insider. Great story about how he got into the business. We're going to go through the quarterbacks, possibly the six quarterbacks that can go in the first round and some of the other players. But I wanted to throw out a WNBA topic and an NBA topic for you. So to summarize what I just said for the last 13 minutes, the WNBA has the life tonight. Do not screw it up. Make it big. Make it big. Go all in on Caitlin Clark. Tell everybody around the world that she's in the WNBA and do not lose this moment. And in the NBA, if your team made it into the play-in tournament and you're happy about that and you think you have a chance, look, everybody's going to think that the Warriors and Lakers have a chance to go from last in this tournament to win. They don't. They're nowhere as near as good as Denver. But you have Minnesota and Oklahoma uh, City in the Western Conference, and everybody knows that Steph Curry and Draymond and Clay can beat one of those teams at the top. Neither one of them can beat Denver. They got no chance to beat Denver. Denver's vastly superior than the Lakers and the Warriors. But it gives everybody a chance that they're all going to be involved here. So jump on board, 888-623-3646, Mad Dog 6. You can get into my live chat on YouTube at JT the Brick YT. Subscribe on that. You can get in, see the backyard brick from my home tonight, and we'll get flying in here and open up the show. So that was two topics that I wanted to open up with. And third is the golf topic of the Masters yesterday. Scotty Scheffler won quite easily. He did win quite easily on the back nine in Augusta National. He was exceptional. He just came in on the back nine of Augusta National and was fantastic. As everybody was going backwards, Scotty Scheffler was making birdies. Now, it's also fascinating to me that Scheffler puts golf fourth in his priority list. Number one is his faith. Number two is his wife. Number three is his entire family. And number four is golf. Okay, there's been guys who played golf your entire life that cheated on their wives, been divorced multiple times, broke up their family for driving under the influence of whatever, and are nowhere near the character of this guy. I'm just, I'm not the moral police. I just want to remind everybody, Scotty Scheffler, after he won the Masters, sat there in the in the press area and said, I want to go home. I want to go home and get back to my wife. Now, not many guys do that. You know, Jack loved Barbara, Arnie, everybody who's won before, they're kind of like, hey, let me go get a shot. Let me go get a beer. I want to hang out here in the Butler cabin, drink a bottle of Silver Oak. No, he's like, get me out of here. I want to go see my wife. And a lot of people were ripping on golf yesterday and today because they don't think they have a face anymore of the franchise, which is the PGA in American golf, other than Scotty Scheffler. And I'm sitting here laughing. I go, who cares? We have one of the most important players in the prime of his career, early prime, now dominating with the second green jacket. He also plays for America in the Ryder Cup. You had the live golfers who played, and then Tiger Woods came in last place, but he made the cut. It theoretically wasn't last place because the guys who missed the cut were behind Tiger Woods. But Tiger Woods came in dead last after making the cut. That should be very alarming to everybody because that's supposed to be the best chance he has to win a major. And he imploded on Saturday and Sunday. His body's breaking down. He's fatigued. And he's really ripped and built up. He's lifting a lot of weights. But you can just tell he cannot play that course anymore for four days. It just takes everything out of him. So that probably was the goodbye to Tiger at the Masters. I'm not saying he can't make the cut again. He's not going to beat a guy like Scotty Scheffler. He's not going to beat a guy like you know uh, Xander Shopley for four days. He just can't do it. And that was a reality to me yesterday. But Scotty Scheffler won. If you're a golfer like I am, and you try to get better, and you're driving around with your golf clubs in your bag and you're in the, in the trunk of your car, call into sports talk shows after the Masters. Call into sports talk shows during the British Open. Or let's just get rid of golf on the radio and just have the golf channel. You know what I mean? Let's take advantage of having a golf topic for 24 hours. Yesterday at this time, Scotty Scheffler was about to close out the field and celebrate at Augusta National. 
I thought it was a really big storyline. And coming up, we'll get into the NFL draft and what you think is going to happen. We're 10 days out. I'm not going to tell you it's one of the most important drafts of all time. I don't know that, but I know there's a lot of quarterback hype. I've been anchoring the Raider draft over 25 years. I'm the guy outside the war room, on the radio, getting the pick handed to me. I've done this my whole career. I think it's one of the things I'm most comfortable with. I love getting into the NFL draft. All I care about is your first pick. No one cares about your team's third pick, your fifth pick. Nobody cares. It's terrible radio. These seven-round mock, mock drafts are garbage for geeks. No one cares about a seven-round uh, mock draft. We care about your first pick and your need. Who are you going to get with your first pick around this? I want to hear about your team and what is your number one need. And most importantly, the fans who are out there need a quarterback. Because the, the next quarterback draft and the one out of that, I mean, there'll always be a quarterback that shines and comes out of nowhere. But this next year's quarterback draft is going to look nothing like this one in 10 days. So Caleb Williams is going to go number one. It looks like Jaden Daniels is going to go two to the commanders. It was Drake May for most of the time. But as more and more people are looking at the film of Jaden Daniels and seeing how he can run and throw, Drake May cannot run anywhere near, anywhere near the level of Jaden Daniels. Might be a better passer than him. So it could be Jaden Daniels two, and then three would be Drake May. Would the Patriots trade out of three to move back? Not that far, just to move back to let a team jump in there at number three. Denver, the Raiders, a whole bunch of teams, the Giants and the Minnesota Vikings all want to move up in the draft. So those are the first three quarterbacks. And then it looks like J.J. McCarthy is going to go four. Michael Penix Jr. is going to go five overall. So you're going to have a good look at the quarterbacks in the draft. And they're all going to go. They're all going to go pretty quickly here. So that's what I want to know from you. What would you do to get one of these quarterbacks? Now, if you say nothing, I don't want to go. I'm just going to stay there and take the best player available. This is a really good draft to just sit back and take the best player available. This is great because if you don't need a quarterback and you're picking like at number five with the Chargers or the Giants at six or Minnesota at 11 and 23, you can just wait there and get a starting wide receiver who's a stud, a starting offensive right guard, which is a stud. I mean, there's some good picks there. So if you don't need a quarterback, this could be great news for your team as they get rolling. If you need a quarterback, I think the wheeling and dealing is going to be absolutely crazy 10 days from now. 888-623-3646. Get on the radio. Get on the phones. Be half as motivated as me. Get in here. Get excited. We have the NFL draft. We have the NBA playoffs and a lot more that I want to get to. I want to start it off with Big Luke out in Georgia as the Masters concluded with Scotty Scheffler. Go ahead, Luke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate the call. As he mentioned, uh, John Sterling, we're going to get into that in a little bit. Matter of fact, why don't we play a John Sterling highlight here as John Sterling, the longtime radio voice of the Yankees, got some health issues. He's going to retire a little bit earlier than expected this year. Here's another call from the great John Sterling. John Sterling on the call there. Yeah, that was a backdrop of my youth for a long time. And John Sterling played a big part for me on the radio for my entire syndicated career as a diehard, over-the-top Yankee apologist who my wife calls Cranky Yankee. I played. I don't know anybody who played more John Sterling sound than I did. Every show I ever hosted, if the Yankees played, win or lose, I played something out of it. So John Sterling's had a nice career. In regards to Vern Lundquist, 
yeah, that's a big loss. And Vern was great when Tiger was able to say goodbye to him after he walked off 16. I think Jim Nance's goodbye to him was fantastic. We'll get into that more. That's a good topic also. It's Monday. WNBA draft is coming up. Typically, that wouldn't lead my show. Caitlin Clark tonight is getting a bigger rating than all the men who play professional sport. We'll tip our cap to her when she gets drafted and have that audio for you first. Uh, Jordan Schultz at the bottom of the hour will join us as we open up the show here. The NFL draft is a priority. Where are the quarterbacks going to go? Is there any tricks of the trade where teams are going to start bluffing? Teams are going to start wondering what's going to happen next, and they all going to panic and want to get a quarterback. Jordan Schultz at the bottom of the hour. JT, Monday nights exclusively right here on Mad Dog Sports Radio. Hey, what's our um, what's our call in number, please? Uh, for you guys, if I get Jordan to call in, what do we have his number? Uh, do we need Jordan's number, or can you give me the uh, give us the call in number, please, for the back line? So I'm saying, uh, just give me the uh, yeah. What is that? Eight six six. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yep. I'll talk to the people in the chat for a bit. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, get in that chat. Tell me what you're thinking. What's going on here? What do you What do you want for your quarterback? What are you thinking? And again, hopefully, you're listening to the show on Sirius XM 82. You won't be able to hear me other than when I'm talking, not the guests. They're not tied in out of New York. So you get a little bit of extra rants, the monologues. I'm going to do this for about an hour or two. Thank you. All right, good to be here on Mad Dog. Please uh, click subscribe and like, and we thank you for that. Anybody on the chat into this Caitlin Clark story, or are you a little bit over it? What do you think? Yeah, if the Patriots FC get May at number three, that's a really good pick for them. Most people had him going number two for a long time. Yeah, no audio from calls on the live stream. Again, that's a Sirius XM thing. This is not this is not connected through Sirius XM. This is this is my own feed from my home. Interested in Caitlin Clark can draw viewers towards the WNBA. Yeah, please do. Yeah, please do. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steph Curry is going to play in his first Olympics. Mm -hmm. Who's on updates here? Who's on updates? Who's on updates, please? Confirm. 
can't hear me, guys. Who's on updates? Huber. What? Yes, so Caitlin Clark, the WNBA Draft, uh, Brooklyn Music Academy tonight. It's about to get underway. Everybody's there for the first pick. We'll try to turn around the audio of that. This is their one chance. WNBA has had a lot of chances to get it going, to get some traction on television. This is their chance. If they can't do it here, I don't see any way they can do it. They can have viewers. They can have a league. It could be subsidized by the NBA and a couple of rich owners. They'll be fine. And people will go watch and play. But if they want to be big and they want to get on TV and have an impact, this is the night on top. Because remember, this is a WNBA night. All those ratings that Caitlin Clark delivered, that was all a part of ESPN and Westwood One, and that was in college. Tonight, the WNBA cannot fail. They have to come up big. And if they screw this up, it will be a disaster. A lot of pressure on the WNBA tonight to get. It might feel real over the top. Because someone at ESPN should be demanding this is way over the top tonight. Art in Los Angeles as the NFL draft is approaching. Go ahead, Art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me jump in. I agree. I'm a big Caleb guy. I saw his first ever game at Oklahoma. I wish Lincoln Riley didn't go to USC as quickly as he did. I thought that was really bad. If he would have stayed there, it would have been incredible to see Caleb come back with Oklahoma. USC, you know, he was there for the Heisman year. The second year, they imploded. He's a great player. He's the best talent to come out since Andrew Luck and Mahomes. He was better than Mahomes at the same time. Better than Mahomes. Worth going number one easily. I love everything about Caleb Williams. He can throw it. He can run. He can do it all. 888-623-3646. Jordan Schultz will come up next. NFL insider, sports insider. Very good at what he does. We'll get his opinions on what's coming up here right after the Mad Dog Sports Bite. Here's Jeremy Huber.
Welcome back, everybody. As we continue on, it's a WNBA draft. Caitlin Clark's about to go first. Uh, she is dressed and ready to go at a table there. Brooklyn Music Academy. Everybody's waiting to see if she can pull her star power over to the WNBA. Very important topic for me in sports because I'm in media, radio, then you got TV, you got streaming, you got all this. When you know something is a can't miss, she's a can't miss. You can't screw it up. And I cannot say in certainty that the WNBA isn't going to screw this up because the NBA, the parent of this league, the NBA, the association screws this up all the time. NBA's got problems, but then all of a sudden we start tuning into the NBA and we like the NBA and we think the NBA is important because it's the playoffs. And what I love about the NBA, I'm still a big fan. How about my Knicks? How long is it going to take me? 40 minutes to get a Nick call? Come on, Nick fans. I'm the diehard Nick fan. JT the Brick rhymes with Knicks. That's how I got my name, with a two seed. With a two seed without Julius Randle. How about the Knicks playing down the stretch? But the NBA is going to count on the ability for everybody to start tuning in because of the stars. The problem this time around for the NBA is really important here because NBA could have a big time problem if the stars get eliminated early. And if they get eliminated early, it's like Steph and LeBron. They get eliminated early. It's going to be rough. It's going to be really rough not to have star power because the star power in Oklahoma City and Minneapolis, I'm, st- I'm sorry, is not the star power in the Bay Area, not in Los Angeles. 888-623-3646 as we continue on. And I, I like the way the play-in will at least put the pressure on the other teams to kind of show up. I want to see what Zion's able to do with New Orleans. Jordan Schultz, kind enough to join us, a sports insider who's fantastic in the NFL, wanted to catch him once before the draft. Jordan, let's begin. What's your big change at quarterback, maybe over the last two or three weeks? Because you and I can see right through this J.J. McCarthy pump up by Harbaugh, now Michael Penix trading, trending down into the top 13. What's moved with your quarterbacks? Jordan Schultz is our guest. I want to stay on McCarthy for a minute here, though. Three years of working with Jim Harbaugh on the whiteboard and in practice, that's extra time with an elite quarterback coach, a quarterback mind, an offensive coordinator, and a head coach. I think that's got to put him back by everybody in regards to preparation, including Caleb Williams that had those special years with Lincoln Riley.
Well, we know, and Jordan Schultz is our guest, what Harbaugh thinks of him. But what about Antonio Pierce and what he thinks of Jaden Daniels as the Raiders are at 13 and would love to get to three, but now maybe have to get to two with the Washington Commanders. Anyway, the Commanders turn down Jaden Williams, seeing those Lamar Jackson stats as the Heisman Trophy. You get a winner, you get a runner, and you get a big thrower. That sounds perfect to rebuild the Commanders. How do you say it? Wrapping it up with Jordan Schultz. I'd love to know your theory behind Belichick being gone and now how New England's going to run their, uh, run their war room. Parcells took a shot at Mr. Kraft back in the day. You got to let him shop for groceries. And that, that riveted everybody at the time because Parcells wanted to be as head coach involved in the process. And Belichick comes in and takes it all over. He wasn't great, great historically on the draft, but he was great coaching the players. What happens now with the Patriots going forward if Drake Mays there and they want to move out of the pick or do they have to take the quarterback in this elite class? Mm -hmm. I agree. Last one for Jordan Schultz. What do you think we could take away from this draft historically? Because if you don't take a quarterback and you're not panicking to move up and get one, you could be at number five, six, seven, eight, and get the best player available at elite positions. That's what I'm fascinated with. If you need a quarterback, go get him, but you better get him quick. If not, you could sit there and add a tremendous starter to your roster very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. At Bleacher Report, NFL Insider, Jordan Schultz at Schultz underscore report. Great to talk to you, my friend. Continued success. Keep it up. You got it, Jordan Schultz. Really good to get him. He's just, he's great. He, he's fantastic. He built his own niche. He's in the niche and he's got a lot of contacts. So every day, every day on my local show in Vegas, the nights I'm able to be here Sunday, Monday for now, I try to bring an NFL insider here for the mock draft. That's what I care about. We're going to focus on this. Congratulations to Caitlin Clark. She just went number one in the WNBA draft. We're going to turn around the sound coming up on that in a little bit. And now the other gals are going to go in whatever order. And I don't think most of the country cares about that. I I know most of the country and you don't care about who's going to be the third, the ninth, the 18th pick. Maybe Angel Reese. Angel Reese had a great career at LSU. Where is she going to go to? That's not the point. My point is simple on this. I'm trying to connect with everybody on this. Caitlin Clark is the golden goose. She, I don't, The WNBA doesn't need to be saved. The NBA will save the WNBA if it doesn't get great ratings and it doesn't get this or that. The NBA will save the WNBA. It now doesn't need saving. The two big things they got going now is a potential dynasty in Las Vegas, Mark Davis and the Las Vegas Aces. He's an NFL owner, the son of Al Davis. Commitment to excellence. The Raiders are trying to win. We get that. He's got a winner. He put in a ton of money in building an all-star team with Hall of Famers. So there is an elite team in the WNBA with the best players. Everybody's chasing Vegas. And now Caitlin Clark comes into Indiana in the heartland of this country, and she will bring in millions of young girls to watch the WNBA, hopefully. Hopefully. I, you know, hopefully. I don't know how it's going to play out. But it's going to have to play out now for the WNBA. If the WNBA doesn't capture this moment and they let any air out of the balloon, they're going to have nobody to blame but themselves. Well, let's get out to Josh in Phoenix as Caitlin Clark was just selected number one. Go ahead, Josh. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's good. I appreciate the call. I got to run. That's fair criticism. What is this WNBA draft doing at the Brooklyn Music Academy? I believe that's where Jimmy Kimmel did his show when he goes back to New York. Like, why, why would that be relevant to not have this in Vegas or in some other venue. I don't know. I think it's some, the p- people on TV are watching. They don't care where it is. They don't care where it is at all. They're going to watch it on TV. Uh, all this is is a television show, and Caitlin Clark went number one. When we come back, you'll hear the sound and reaction of her, be- her being drafted number one. Show started 50 minutes ago. I don't have one NBA fan on hold. Not one NBA fan in my chat on YouTube, JT the Brick YT, and no NBA fan. I called out the NBA as hard as you can in the first 15 minutes of the show. I want to know if you're going to buy in and watch this play-in tournament in the playoffs. Are you disgusted by it? Are you against it? Do you not like the theory behind it? Or do you think, hey, we got to evolve with the times. This is good to get the playoffs starting earlier with the worst teams. Triple eight, six, two, three, three, six, four, six. JT, Find me on Mad Dog. Find me on YouTube. Find me everywhere. But tonight on the Powerful 82, this is Mad Dog Sports Radio. Okay. We'll come out with that. Uh, Would you come out with that uh, audio of her? All right. Sounds good. All right. Let me get back here. Yeah, guys, this is, and if Sirius XM had their live stream, we'd be able to take the calls and the guests. This is, This is my YouTube page, so we don't have the ability to do that. So you'll be able to catch my monologues, my opinions, my rants, and all that. We'll go for about another half hour or so. Does anybody care about this Caitlin Clark stuff? I mean, now the the second, third, fourth pick in the draft are going to start going. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. 
how far down this Camilla Cardosa, Cardosa of South Carolina. You got a UConn player. You got Angel Reese. Big night for the WNBA. Yeah, and please uh, click subscribe and share it if you can. We're trying to build up this channel. So when you wonder where I'm on Wednesday night or Thursday night, I think this could be in a year or so as big as a radio show. If I got this thing built up to 10,000 subscribers and all that, and we've just been doing it for two months, just plugging it in, and we got about 3,000 subscribers. So we're trying to take it up to a bigger number. The next goal is 5,000. Then we'll get to 10,000, then hope it takes off from there. So appreciate you being the early subscribers to this channel. It means a lot to me. Appreciate that. Be right there. Twenty twenty, got around fifty thousand miles on it. Warranty's gonna be big on this one. Yeah, which I don't think there is. It's gonna to have to get a warranty because that's why it's being traded in. It's not gonna be a warranty. Okay, and that's a conversation that we got. We got with them. So when they right. budget the end, you have to pay for a warranty. Right. If that thing needs a converter right. or something, it's a six hundred. But any car, is. I know. new cars, fifty grand. No, but any new they really are, but they yeah, have I, I have a BMW, but I've never BMW cars in my third quarter, yeah. you know. I mean, we, we, we like that car. Is it the same model? Is it the 500? It's a 500. Yeah, it's a 500. It's a 500. We're having a debate in my home tonight because my son is buying his first car. He's had cars, but... We've bought him. Now he's buying his own car. So talking warranties, insurance, you know, 22-year-old. Yeah, he is pretty excited. But, you know, I, my, my philosophy is buying cars. Uh, um, I'll tell you. Welcome back, everybody. If you're listening on Mad Dog, of course you are. Channel 82, we appreciate that. You can find me on YouTube at JT the Brick YT. You all have a YouTube page or watch YouTube. Please subscribe and share to that. That was Caitlin Clark uh, getting picked number one overall. And congratulations to her. This is a big topic. I got people on hold about her, people in Twitter, people in the chat, and that's never happened before. I've never avoided the WNBA. I just didn't talk about it because no one talked about it. I wasn't avoiding it. If everybody was talking about the WNBA, I would be talking about it. If everybody was talking about NASCAR, something I did and started to go to NASCAR races in the 2000s, trying to get it on radio. I don't want, I don't want to call myself a pioneer of doing that, but I was one of the first guys that on a national show said, we're going to do NASCAR. We're going to do it. Well, you can't get away with that in New York on WFAN. You can't do a half hour on NASCAR. You can't do it. You can't do that in certain markets because they don't want to hear any of it. Nationally, you can do a couple of different topics. Caitlin Clark is important tonight in New York, in Los Angeles, in Miami, in Detroit, in Seattle, all around the country, because she's made for television. 
and there's not many women in that sport, and they've been great. And I'm talking great, fantastic over the decades that just didn't move the needle. That doesn't mean they weren't great players. Brianna Stewart, Rebecca Lobo, Deanna, Deanna Taurasi, all great players might be better than Caitlin Clark, but they didn't move the needle the way she is. And by moving the needle, that's fantastic that she could do that. All right, appreciate everybody being patient. I'll try to get everybody up here really quick. Here's Brendan in Phoenix. That's a WNBA town. Go ahead, Brendan. Doing well, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, the, come on, man. Good. Don't tell me. The, don't tell me the NF. Hold on. You lost me. Don't tell me the NFL draft is boring. And why? Why are you hearing Caitlin Clark for a few minutes? Because she got 18 million in ratings. That's more than LeBron James and Anthony Davis and Steph Curry and Bryce Harper and Mike Trout. I mean, this is this is a comet in the sky. You got to look at it's like the eclipse. You got to have to take a look at it and acknowledge it's there. She's that special. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because baseball, and I appreciate your call. I, I appreciate your call. It's driving me nuts. I got to get you off the radio because baseball doesn't get 18 million. Baseball doesn't get 14 million. Baseball doesn't get... 12 million in the last 20 days. That's why it's really easy. Look again, you're not going to hear me doing a lot of WNBA. You're not going to hear me at all. I'm just, I'm just riding the wave like I'm supposed to in my job, riding the wave of the biggest thing out there. Okay. She's the biggest thing out there. No one saw it coming. Nobody. She's massive. And tonight she's drafted. So we'll mention it. I'm not saying it's going to work. I'm, I'm, I thought I came up with a really good topic, and the, the topic for me was, is the WNBA going to screw this up? Is the WNBA going to screw this up, even with Caitlin Clark? And what's going to be the responsibility for the NBA to get this right? Triple Eight Mad Dog Six. Here is Eli. He's in Baltimore on my beloved New York Knickerbockers, the number two seed. Are you kidding me? Well, with, I think they might be better, and it, you're not better without Patrick Ewing or better without Julius Randle, but the fact that Julius Randle isn't taking bad threes and fall-away threes and Brunson is attacking the front of the rim, I'm loving it. Absolutely. A matter of fact, now it's conference final or bust because Milwaukee's imploding. Appreciate the phone call. You know, two months ago, I'd say if the Knicks got the fourth seed and got out of the first round and played into the second round and got to six or seven games without Randall, I'd be happy. The New York Knicks now need to get to the Eastern Conference Finals and find a way to get there and put up a fight against Boston. And that'll be Madison Square Garden versus Boston Garden. And that to me would be tremendous if I could happen. I hope that can happen, but that should be the expectations of the Knicks after the way they played down the stretch. Triple A Mad Dog Six, hour number two coming up. Olden Polonies, the big, big man. We'll talk NBA playoffs and seedings next hour. All right, man, let's do a uh, let's do another reset here at the top of the hour uh, reset on what we've had. Let me see sound wise what we talked about that Caitlin Clark getting drafted. Is there any post on her talking? OK. OK, yeah, let's get to the UFC KO, the live call, the Holloway KO and Dana Holloway call and Dana. And. Let's get 
Uh, Steve Kerr, we have something that could be very special. And give me LeBron on the Pelicans. All right. You're right there. Yep, we'll get to that. How about the Mad Dog? How about the Mad Dog Radio chat brewing nicely here? We got some Mad Dog listeners in here. Appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. What's that interview? What are you talking about? USFL highlights. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. Now, just come back with, you know, I'd like to start off top of the hours with like my songs. I mean, we're, we're just using the imaging that's here, but I like my, you know, on to run, you know, whatever. Oh, I hope everybody's doing well. Good to have you back. JT, back in Vegas. I was in San Diego over the weekend. Went to see Billy Joel and Sting perform at Petco Park, the home of the Padres. Got stuck in a little rainstorm for Billy Joel. I mean, rain, pouring. And that was kind of interesting because I live in a desert where it never rains. So that was a lot of fun. Had a good time. And now we're back. The WNBA, Caitlin Clark just went number one overall. So that's a big moment in WNBA history. That's an historic moment as we were live on the radio for that to happen. So I'll always remember that. No matter how long I do this, hopefully decades from now, I can say, hey, I was on the night. Caitlin Clark went number one in the draft. As we were on live the night, she got 18 million and lost in the championship final in college. We were there when she won the semifinal game. We were there when she beat UConn. We were there for all of it. And it was an enormous rating. So now there's pressure. You know, a lot of people think this is going to be easy for the WNBA. Oh, my God, we got Caitlin Clark. We got her now in Indiana. Oh, it's going to be on the gravy train now. It's going to be easy. No, it's just the exact opposite for me. I, when I see these television networks and the TV companies that get ratings gifted to them, gifted to them, ESPN should have a building named after Caitlin Clark. Now it's their job to further promote her to try to build on that rating. Very tough to do. That's why when you see a TV show, over a decade like Seinfeld. Seinfeld was very popular. No one knew about it. In the beginning of Seinfeld, no one knew about it. It was on NBC. They put it in their primetime block. Next thing you know, they got all these special shows around it and they started marketing it like a monster. So even if you didn't understand Seinfeld, it was a show about nothing. You felt left out. You felt left out if you went to a dinner or a bar and everybody was talking about it and you didn't know what was going on. You went and found it. And then you found it for a decade. MASH, all the shows that we've had. She is the equivalent of that. She is the ratings darling of a big sport in this country, basketball. But guys think of basketball as the NBA. Women think of basketball as the NBA. Now we got to get people to think of the WNBA or her career is never going to get any bigger than this. And she'll be known for a college athlete and an Olympian. The Olympics are really important, everybody. You hear, you hear the uh, NBA guys now. Steph Curry is going to play in the Olympics. You can get a lot of branding out of that. 
So tonight's an important night for this sport. We'll see what they do with it. The matchup in the NBA playoffs, and Olden Polonese is going to join us coming up here in about an hour. Uh, I, I want to be the get-off-my-lawn guy because I'm not in real life. Your other favorite guys, come on. I mean, you, you see what I do. I like to do things in my life. I go to games. You can't be a get-off-the-lawn guy if you go to every NFL game and you're not at home in your basement. So I'm not an NFL get-off-my-lawn guy. But when it comes to the NBA, in my perfect world, there would be no 9 and 10 seed. That's it. I wouldn't have a 9 and 10 seed. I'd have the top eight seeds play. Well, what happened is we look at the European model and what's happening in Europe, and this comes off the Premier League, where during the Premier League season, they also have other trophies. You're allowed to stop the season, and then you go play. You have the European League, right? You have the European Championship. Maybe the World Cup will pause the season. You fight for the FA Cup and the Premier League. There's a whole bunch of leagues going on. Well, David Stern, uh, excuse me, uh, Adam Silver looked at this in the NBA and said, we need we need to change the sport. We have to have an in-season tournament to get the players engaged to playing hard early in October and November because they don't start playing hard until Christmas Day. Christmas Day is the launch of the NBA season. They launch it on Christmas. They used to have a doubleheader, and now they have five games back-to-back. And the players got lazy, and they didn't care about the early part of the regular season because it didn't mean squat. And now it doesn't mean squat because you can have a bad bad year like Atlanta. You can have a terrible year like some of these other teams and get in. So you don't have to worry about, hey, November 15th, you have a game. No, it's not the end of the world. You're the Atlanta Hawks. Your record's 36 and 46, 28 games out of first, and we invite them into a play-in tournament. The Chicago Bulls, major market team, 39 and 43, 25 games out. They get to play each other to see who can advance. The play-in for the 76ers in Miami are going to be really important uh, for that seed, for that seed, the seventh seed, because the Sixers with Joel Embiid back, and they've won eight in a row. That's probably the one team, the 76ers in the Eastern Conference, and I'd say the Lakers and Warriors, but the Warriors more so. They have a tougher road in the Western Conference. You want Joel Embiid, LeBron James, and Steph Curry. In a matter of a couple days here, ladies and gentlemen, we could have Steph Curry, LeBron James, Jimmy Butler, and Joel Embiid out of the playoffs as they begin. Uh, that That's not good for the NBA because they like to showcase their stars. And if you don't have the stars there, there are going to be people in sports bars on a Tuesday night that are, are going to say, I don't want to go out and get some chicken wings and some beer to watch a game because the Lakers are out and the Warriors are out. I'm not going to go get some chicken wings and beers and watch the Cleveland Cavaliers you know, play the Milwaukee Bucks. That doesn't move the needle. Caitlin Clark moves the needle more than the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Milwaukee Bucks. So this is all about television and the impact of it. And we'll start off with both these leagues tonight. NFL draft. I've told you we had Jordan Schultz on a little bit earlier ago. Uh, The importance of the quarterback this year round. Jordan Schultz, like myself, think it's going to be a great NFL draft. But it's confusing to me this year because there's a lot of quarterbacks that I don't have high grades. Like, I don't think J.J. McCarthy is a top five pick. I don't think Michael Penix is a top 15 pick. I don't think Bo Nix is a top 25 pick, and they're all going to go. His teams are desperate for quarterbacks, and this is the draft to go get them. Caleb Williams is a lock at number one. The biggest story of the draft will be, will the commanders take Drake May at two, or will they go Jaden Daniels at two? I don't, I'm not sensing anybody wants to trade up for Drake May. Isn't that weird? Isn't that an interesting topic? That you don't, you don't hear any radio show or anybody talking about, hey, Let's go trade up and try to get a player like Drake May. Everybody's talking about Jaden Daniels because he can run. And if you can run as a quarterback in this league now, you enhance the opportunity for your team to win games because the pocket is always breaking down when you have superstars like T.J. Watt and Max Crosby. And you go around the league with all these edge rushers who are really good. They get to the quarterback, even if you chip them. But the quarterback's got to be able to step up in the pocket and run. Mahomes is exceptional at it. Lamar Jackson. Now you got two quarterbacks maybe in the top two picks in Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels who can take off not for five yards but for 30 yards. I'm telling you, living in Vegas with the Raiders, we haven't had that guy for a long time. Derek Carr wasn't very mobile. Aiden O'Connell isn't very mobile. Minshew's a little bit mobile, but none of them at the level of Jaden Daniels. And one other quick topic, I think that Sean Payton has ruined the Denver Broncos in a year. 
in a year, he has come in and destroyed the Denver Broncos, where after the Russell Wilson debacle, that wasn't his call, but he took the job. He didn't have to take the job. He ran Russell Wilson out of town. Now he doesn't have a quarterback. He lost a lot of money and dead cap money because of Russell Wilson. They lost draft picks for the future because he decided to move on from Russell Wilson. And what happens if Denver doesn't get a quarterback in this draft? What, what, who's going to play quarterback for Denver in a league that has some pretty good quarterbacks, including Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes in the AFC West? So those are all big topics. And Scotty Scheffler winning the Masters, I enjoyed that very much. I really did. I would have liked to have seen Brooks Kepka. Bryson DeChambeau was fascinating. I mean, he was hitting bombs, but at the end, his math and his mind messed up a little bit and he couldn't dial everything in perfectly, but he had a chance. And to see the young players that came up in the Masters for the first time, but Scotty Scheffler, we're all going to bet, we better get used to him. And, and I'm concerned about one thing. He doesn't have a big, big, bold personality. He's one of those guys, Scotty Scheffler, you have a lot of friends like this, probably. You got that guy in your group of 10 friends or 20 friends who is kind of the alpha He's got the best things in life. He's got the best job, the best car, but he's not the guy that shows up and becomes the idiot at the party and does beer funnels and goes crazy. Scotty Scheffler's the guy who wants to sit in the back. And then when his job comes up and he has to play in a tournament, he wants to bury everybody. And then afterwards, he's not going to say anything controversial. We're not used to that in 2024. You know, we were used to that with Ben Hogan and Sam Snead and Jack Nicholas and, and people back then. Now everybody's loud. Everybody's out of their mind. Everybody's saying something negative about someone else. Everybody loves embracing the debate of just making up crap. And Scotty Scheffler is going to be around for a while, and he's not going to partake in any of it, none of it. Maybe other than you know, turn on his camera and give you a couple tips on how to chip and putt. This guy is not going to engage the media where the media is in 2024. Everybody wants to be a wannabe Stephen A. Smith who listens and is a friend of this show. Only Stephen A. can pull off his brand, which is authentic. That's not a joke. That's who Stephen A. is. You know, he's a great guy off the air, but when he's on the air, he likes to entertain. He likes to give you everything he's got. Well, Scotty Scheffler is a guy who's not going to do that. And the media in golf, they're dying for a controversy with Liv and the PGA Tour. Scotty's not going to get involved with any of that. So we got a busy night tonight. Uh, baseball is underway. Uh, baseball wants this Otani topic to go away so badly, so badly. All this money that Ipe, the interpreter, stole from him. Is there anybody on God's green earth who's listening to me that says this smells ugly? It, it just doesn't make sense that Otani was getting robbed for the amount of money by a degenerate gambler and didn't know anything about it at the level that Ipe had full access to his money. I mean, come on. This, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's the end of the world. But are we all going to buy into this? It looks like baseball and the Dodgers want to clear Otani so quickly and put it on the back page of yesterday's news. Is there going to be an investigative journalist? Is anything going to come up in this investigation with the IRS and the feds? Or is Otani home free? Triple H six two three three six four six, as Caitlin Clark was just taken a uh, number one overall. Uh, we'll get you some sound for that coming up here in a little bit. Wanted you to hear from LeBron James. Here's LeBron now. He gets to play the Pelicans. Here it's Zion, who's a big young star going up against the King. Here he is, LeBron James. Yeah, it's a new game, and it's an opportunity. They got to win this game. The Lakers got to get by Zion, and they got to get by the winner of the Warriors and the Sacramento Kings. Speaking of the Warriors, Steve Kerr understands this season was a complete throwaway. The Warriors have been on the outside looking in the whole time. Now Kerr's going to spin it that they can kind of light a fire and do something special here. And he'll do that. He'll try to get the best of them out of there. Oh, I know what I wanted to get to. UFC 300, the Holloway knockout, the live call on this was incredible. I'm not a big UFC guy, but I live in Vegas. Dana White, I know. 
I know him decently. I'm really proud for his success and what he's been able to do with the brand. I'm more boxing than UFC. But as my sons watched this, they went crazy as they went toe to toe in the center of the ring. Here's how it sounded. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun, and that's a big moment. UFC. Listen, that's courtesy of UFC pay-per-view on the call. And Dana White afterwards, this is a promoter. He's constantly talking about his sport and how it's evolving. This was the fight of the year. Good sound from Dana White. So congratulations. And they announced the Conor McGregor fight 303, which we were aware of already out here in Vegas. That'll be a big deal. As Conor now is just a movie star. They want to get him out there in the octagon one or two more times for a big gate and a pay-per-view and uh, his best of his careers behind him. But he could still sell tickets. That's really important. Triple eight six two three three six four six. as we continue. I'm live on YouTube in my house. I just throw this channel up there to try to get some subscribers and talk to people. If you want to get in, JT the Brick, YT, subscribe and share there. Let's get it going. Here's Heather in New York, female radio on Caitlin Clark going number one. Go ahead, Heather. Heather, you're on the radio. Go ahead. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Excellent phone call. I agree with everything you said. Angel Reese out of LSU was just drafted by Chicago. And that most people thought she would be great in a major market. And she gets to go to a major market there. In Chicago, that lady at the end of her call, appreciated, said something great. She owns an entire demographic that there's a big demographic of young girls in middle school and high school that are going to buy everything in the world coming up in the next 20 years. They're going to buy everything, the cars, the homes, everything that you need to have a life. And that's an important demographic for television. Just look at American Idol. Look at The Voice. Look at all these shows. They're gravitating to a younger female demographic. That's going to buy up a lot of things and connect with sponsors. She nailed it. That's what they're going to be able to do. And she said at the end for the WNBA, don't screw it up. Yeah, don't screw it up. People screw things up all the time. I screw up five times a day before breakfast. I admit it. When you screw up, admit it. I think the WNBA tonight, by throwing this up here and, and letting everybody see it and promote it, understand the importance of that. Uh, Trey is in South Carolina. He's calling into Mad Dog. Hello, Trey.
Yeah, look, uh, people steal from each other all the time. It's called white collar crime. It happens, but it's rare when you don't look at your money at all. Okay, you got to be an idiot. You got to be an idiot to be a billionaire, a multimillionaire, have this money, work your ass off for it, and then don't look at your money at all. That doesn't work. And Otani's supposed to be super sharp. And to say that he kind of got tripped up because he trusted Ipe, his interpreter and all this, he knew that Ipe was a degenerate gambler. So he should have been looking at his money if this guy's a degenerate piece of garbage gambler. And let me tell you something. Degenerate gamblers destroy families, wives, husbands, kids. So he's working with the degenerate gambler, and we find out that he's not paying attention to his money? Give me a break. Yeah, thanks for the call. I just looked back. They had a they put a graphic up at the history of Indiana and what they haven't done. They're a pretty bad organization. Missed the playoffs seven years in a row. It's not automatic. People are going to watch them, but they got to find a way to get players. I say goodbye to the YouTube stream. Thanks to everybody on YouTube tonight. Uh, fantastic that we got a new audience there. JT the Brick YT on YouTube. When we come back, Olden Polonies will join us coming up here on the NBA play. And look, Olden. Went on a hunger strike. Olden is a big, bold thinker, highly educated, 15 years, came in against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, went out against LeBron, very popular guy. His opinions are strong. I forget what I asked him last year about the play-in tournament. I have no idea what he's going to say, but it will be intriguing coming up next. JT, on a Monday night, you're listening to Mad Dog.